Harry, we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. It's about Hannah, the mother of Samuel. So we'll start off. Verse 9. Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. This is Hannah praying to God in her total misery. She has no children and cannot conceive. Her husband's other wife has lots and torments her for her situation. She has gone to the house of God to pray passionately. The priest sees her and reprimands her for being drunk, he thinks. In those days, the priest group stood between them and God. <clears throat> and I've been thinking a lot about that lately. This barrier is now gone. When Jesus died, the curtain of the temple from top to bottom was was torn, and this barrier is gone from by Jesus. How wonderful. Everyone can go directly to Jesus, no middleman required. We, we who are in Christ do not own those who are hurting. Our duty is to show them who Jesus is and show them the way to the light. Could you read Mark uh, 16, 18? It says, They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. Doesn't that say we should pray over sick people? Who said it and who wrote it? Actually, we know for a fact that Mark didn't write this, right? So uh, my guess would be is that an, a scribe uh, thought that the Mark's gospel ended a little awkwardly, and they just added it in to make it flow better. What's your thoughts, Harry? Yeah, my Bible tells me that verse 9 to 20 were added later by someone. And uh, and we know that that teaching doesn't exist in other Gospels. And it marks it as red ink. This is uh, quoting Jesus as being legitimate. And we know that Mark didn't write it and nobody else did. And yet we use that verse all the time to tell people that this is how we should get natural healing. Back to Hannah. She bypassed the priest and went straight to God. In her total pain and anguish, God answered her prayer. <clears throat> her son Samuel is one of our faith heroes today. Would she have gotten through to God if she had asked Eli, the priest, to pray for her? Would Eli have had the same passion Hannah had? And the answer is no, of course not. Prayer request, where did that come from? Are we going back to the priest class, class, praying for others? Where is the passion in that? No passion will get no answers. Mm -hmm. We need to be a priest by listening to hurting people and explaining how people can take their cry to God directly. If all we want is to feel better, go see a doctor. If we want soul healing, Jesus has the answer. Many don't want to talk to Jesus because Jesus has some requirements on our part before he does his part. Jesus will hear our prayer if we, like Hannah, we have a total surrender to God's plans. Most prayers are, help me, but don't change me. Repentance and complete surrender is the only condition that Jesus will work with. Not interested? Go see a doctor. Amen, Harry. But I just have a quick question. So let's say I came to you in this case and said to you, hey, Harry, can uh, you please pray for me? What would you say to me in a loving way that would uh, encourage that person to go to Jesus themselves? And I say, I will say, I will pray for you, but that's separate. And that prayer is that you get to know Jesus and that you can get your needs met by him and then talk to you about how that we have 
the right to go see him. If we don't know Jesus and we don't want to know Jesus, don't go to him with request. He doesn't offer that to people that aren't interested in his plan. But if we want what if we want what he what he is willing to offer, then that's a program that is beautiful because soul healing is part of this program. Jesus, when he healed, he also healed the soul. He said, "Your sins are forgiven." But he also said, "Don't don't go back to your old ways, lest something worse happen to you." So it's it's a two part two part deal: soul healing, natural healing, all that goes as a package, and even and. But even natural healing didn't happen a lot of times in the Bible. Paul himself was not healed. Timothy was not healed. Epaphroditus was not healed. He healed, Paul healed hundreds, maybe thousands of people into the faith. But in the faith, not so much. All right. Thanks a lot for this, Harry. Thank you.